Today we're going to be looking at a channel called The Backyard Scientist. Specifically, we're going to be looking at this video called How Bright is Deadly Radiation? This thumbnail is terrifying. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Check it out. I was wondering, what if we could see dangerous radiation? How bright would it look like if we could see it? Ah! I was thinking about this because I was watching the TV show Chernobyl on HBO. Oh, no. Mmm. It's never a good start. Firefighters just ran right into the burning reactor building, totally unaware of any dangers. You taste metal. Yeah, what is that? And how could they know? One of the firefighters even picks up a chunk of graphite from the core, and it was so radioactive later they said he was holding 4 million x-rays in his hand. So I was thinking, what if we could see the radiation coming off of that graphite? How bright would it look like to our eyes? And how okay. bright would a lethal radiation dose look like? How would it compare to a normal, everyday household light bulb? First, let's take a look at different doses of radiation and see what effect they have on our body. One way to measure radiation exposure is in grays, and it stands for one joule of energy absorbed per kilogram of matter. Now let's say that I'm 70 kilograms. It would take 70 joules of energy to equal a whole body dose of one gray. Gray is a big unit of energy. This amount of radiation, not great, not terrible. One gray is enough to cause mild radiation sickness with nausea and vomiting, but typically not that big of a deal. So this depends a lot on what the radiation actually is. So one gray, he's actually talking around the best case scenario where they're assuming one gray is one sievert. There is a conversion that takes place between grays and sieverts. This unit is correct in terms of energy per unit mass, but there's the sievert takes into account that it's a person. So a gray will be a dose that is absorbed by anything, but a sievert, what really gets into the impact on the human body. Now, with gamma radiation, one gray is one sievert. However, for, say, neutron dose, dose from an operating nuclear reactor, that's going to go up by a factor of five or higher. There is something called a quality factor, so you multiply the grays by a number to get its effect on the body. So this number right here for one gray, this is your best case scenario. It can get worse. 10 grays of radiation on the other hand is, well, terrible. And after the initial sickness, you will feel better, but not for very long because death occurs within a month or two due to the radiation destroying your immune system. So five to 10, we crank things up a lot and it really is directly proportional how quickly it's gonna kill you between 5 to 10 sieverts, so these numbers do check out with a sievert table for that. The 50% fatal, 100% fatal, so again, this is assuming whole body dose. You can have targeted dose to certain body parts and it not be fatal. That's actually how radiation therapy works to treat from cancer, is that you can have a few sieverts of dose to a certain part of the body, but it just goes to that certain part of the body where the tumor is. And you can have localized effects such as burning of the local tissue, but it's actually designed to save you, not kill you. And these 50%, 100% fatal, so these are massive probability functions. In the four to, four to six gray range, you're looking at what is called an LD5060. That is 50% of the population exposed will be dead within 60 days. And 10 sieverts is largely considered certain death, but technically there's a chance, but for all intents and purposes, you could just say certain death like it says. One key factor though is this is an acute dose. You're getting your dose within the order of seconds to hours. Dose gradually accrued over several years isn't nearly as severe as an acute dose. Now that combined dose, that's when you're looking at increased chance of cancer. And this becomes evident at above 100 millisieverts or 0.1 gray as making the same assumption that he did for following the same pattern as the rest of this table here. Keep in mind, these, this is actually starting out very, very high. 
to give you a smaller number, you get 0.1 microsieverts for eating a banana. As in, it would take millions of bananas to kill you from radiation. You'd die a lot faster from eating too much. Now, if you've received 30 grades of radiation, you won't even have time to worry about much because the typical survival rate after a dose like this is on the order of 18 That's days. horrifying. So anyway, now we know what different doses of radiation would look like. How would they compare to a light bulb? This is a 25 watt incandescent bulb. It consumes 25 watts of electricity. That means it consumes 25 joules per second of electricity. Now, these lights aren't very efficient, only about 5% efficient at turning electricity into light. The rest gets turned into heat. So basically, this thing is outputting only about one joule per second of light energy. So if I'm about this far away, it means I'm only receiving about 0.1 joules per second of energy. So if this light was radiation, it would take me hours to receive- Light is radiation, by the way. It's just not ionizing radiation. It's radiation that's specifically at a certain wavelength that emits that yellow-white color that you see right there. But I can tell he's using it as an analogy, but I just thought I'd clarify that. Ra radiation is everywhere, and a lot of it is not, is not ionizing radiation. A fatal dose of radiation. A well-lit room like this typically has about one watt per square meter of light that's hitting the walls. So that means if this light was radiation, I would receive a fatal dose in about 10 minutes. I can kind of see, I, it's a little, for me, it's, it's, it's challenging for me to wrap my brain around because I, it's like, you can look at light and you can even look at certain bits because light is radiation, but now you're saying all of it is light traveling at a certain frequency and wavelength that's gonna be ionizing and fill the room it's uh, <laughs> it's a little weird I'm, uh, it's like there's a couple of conflicting things going on in my brain as i watch this no not my primmy don't get radiation no ah, i'll protect you what <laughs> it's like who cares about me save the bone now in full sun, the amount of energy that hits the ground is about 1000 watts per square meter. So if all the sun's light was replaced with dangerous radiation, you would receive a fatal dose in three seconds. Yeah, you would if you would. But one thing I will mind, it says replaced with dangerous radiation. He is using, the sun does send some, send ultraviolet radiation, which can be dangerous. And there is even a tiny bit of ionizing radiation that comes from the sun, as well as other stars in space. That's uh, cosmic radiation. It's, it is gamma radiation, just really high energy gamma radiation that travels great distances throughout space. But okay, so using his analogy, if you converted all the visible light into it, then sure. <laughs> you can have deadly radiation that isn't ionizing. Like UV is a good example. You can have lasers that operate in visible light um, and into uh, infrared light that can also be deadly. <laughs> he mean, he should say ionizing radiation if he's trying to if he's trying to use this analogy. By the way, if you want to see uh, me react to a video that goes deep into all kinds of radiation, including visible light, UV light, ionizing, um, I highly recommend you check out my reaction to one of Blue Jay's videos. I'll pin that one in the comments below. 1,000 to 1,000 dead. So we know that deadly radiation is invisible. We can't see it with our eyes, but we can indirectly observe its effects. You can also see it. You can see it. It's, this is Cherenkov radiation, which is what happens when you have particles that go faster than light in water. Can't go faster than light in a vacuum, but you can go faster than it in water as a result from nuclear reactions that are taking place within the reactor. And you get a lot of it when the reactor is operating, but you'll even see a little bit of it when the reactor is shut down. That's because fission's reactions still occur, just not enough to sustain it. But you can, and I've looked at it many times from a safe distance, of course, because it's underwater, water absorbs a lot of radiation. Above it on the refueling bridge, you can still see that little blue glow from particles, radiation, traveling faster than the speed of light in water. That is an example of ionizing radiation that you can see. So in the TV show Chernobyl, there was that big blue pillar of light coming off of the core, and that was because the air was so radioactive, there were so many radioactive particles zipping around that it was ionizing the air and causing it to glow. It is beautiful. So if you ever come across this glowing 
the reason why they put it in the show was because it was based on some reported sites of blue or even reddish glow during during the actual event but it wouldn't have looked like that cherenkov radiation it's it's the water is what that's from so that's not it as far as it causing ionizations in the air sure but not from <laughs> they lose their energy very quickly you're not gonna see it extending upward in the sky like that so that that scene right there is unrealistic is all that is <laughs> rock in the woods that's glowing a dull bluish purple walk away run away because that is deadly radiation People have observed this before and didn't know they were in danger. In Brazil, there was an accident where a worker cut open a radioactive source from a radiotherapy unit to treat cancer, and he took it home and showed his kids, and they were picking apart the radioactive material and playing with it because it was glowing blue. They were spreading it across the floor and rolling it around, rolling around in it because they thought it was some magical substance. So I guess. Yes, um, no, don't, do not play with the nuclear fairy dust. That was another video. I did a reaction video to Kyle Hills, one that went in depth on, on that accident in Brazil. That one was very, very tragic. You see something you're not familiar with, don't assume it's, it's a toy that you should play with. If you could see radiation, you might not know that it is dangerous. And the workers that disassembled this core, they had to get their fingers amputated, they had burns on their hand, like the size of the radioactive material. So yeah, invisible radiation like that is such an abstract concept that even if you come across it, you might not recognize what's going on right away. But you're gonna learn. So this is what That's our true. deadly radiation source would look like at nighttime. Now say I'm one meter away, that means I would be receiving about 3,600 joules per hour or give me a fatal dose in about 10 minutes. That is basically the same kind of radiation dose that you would be getting from the elephant's foot molten reactor core at Chernobyl. That's from shortly after the accident. Just thought it'd be clear. You wouldn't get that now. It would. You'd have to wait a little bit longer for it to kill you now. So it would take me 10 minutes to receive a fatal dose at this distance. Now if I backed up to 2 meters away, right here 2 meters, that means that I would be okay. receiving a dose of 900 inverse square law that means it, it checks out and oh th that is the one thing that you can use with visible light is they both use a, the similar inverse square law for luminosity as well as radiation dose that that checks out one question i often get on this subject is what would actually kill you first if you were to show up right next to an operating nuclear power plant, like if you were in, in the reactor core, well, the nuclear power plant I worked at, it would be the pressure. They're pressurized at 2,235 PSI. So that's what would kill you first, the pressure. Then it would be the temperature at upwards of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> And then it would be the neutron dose. Uh, keep in mind that neutrons have that times five to times 10 in the case of fast neutrons multiplier. So all those numbers you see in grays in this video that I'm reacting to, just multiply all those by five. And the dose is extremely high, way higher than anything you've even seen. Not even gonna throw a number out there, but it wouldn't kill you as quickly as the heat and pressure. Now while you're shut down, it's different because no heat, no pressure, and the fission reaction is shut down, it is subcritical, it would be from the fission product, so it would be beta and gamma radiation dose. Though, you are underwater, so it's possible that you could just simply die of drowning if you stay underwater for long enough. So, take your pick. Take me almost 40 minutes to receive a fatal dose of radiation. And if I move back even further, to five meters away, or about 15 feet, it would take me four hours to receive a fatal dose of radiation. Not too bad back here at five meters away. Thanks. If you were getting that much dose, you'd still exceed so many dose limits, it's not even funny. But this does show you time and distance are some of your key factors. Shielding as well, using uh, lead or concrete in the case of gamma radiation or neutron radiation. Yes, it shows you how quickly running away from the source can get you to safety. The inverse square law, the farther away you get from it, the exposure drastically decreases from any point source like a light or radiation exposure. So yeah, always want to keep your distance from a giant radioactive light bulb in the middle of the night, except the mosquitoes. Get fried, suckers!
All right, so I changed my camera settings. So this is what it actually looks like to my eyes at nighttime. Now, like I said before, this is, if you were standing one meter away, this is what it would be like if you were standing at the reactor core of Chernobyl, the elephant's foot, you know, 10,000 rotten gins for, per hour. It would really light up that whole area. And you would know, if you could see it, you would know. So rotgins are actually a little different. You're looking at, the units are coulombs per kilogram, which is a unit of electrical charge. So it's actually looking at the ionizations themselves of how much charge in the air is being created by this radiation. For a lot of practice and purposes, one rontgen can equal one rad based on assuming it's, it's gamma radiation, but you're still gonna run into that same issue when you convert it to how it actually affects the body. But rontgen is what they used a lot in the HBO Chernobyl series, so that's why he's going with that, I'm guessing. Stay far, far away from that giant bright light. Look at how well it illuminates the whole yard. You can still see the ballista out there. You know, you can, yikes. You know, the closer you get, the more radiation exposure you're it's getting. teaching people to be afraid of light. <laughs> yeah. Don't go towards the light if it's radioactive. No! That was certainly different. To me, at least, somewhat confusing to talk about radiation using another type of radiation as an example, that being light. I could follow it, but it was a little, <laughs> it was a little out there. I do appreciate the effort and make and attempting to make something a little bit easier to stand to understand and especially with the hbo chernobyl series not being the most accurate and again i appreciate any effort by anyone on this platform to educate people on radiation and all things nuclear thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time